Hey everyone, here with another LEGO Star Wars Summer 2024 review, and probably probably my last for now, or whatever else there could be, but yeah. And this one's on the Imperial Star Destroyer 25th Anniversary one. Well, that is now released, but yeah. So on the front of the box here, we have the uh, LEGO Star Wars logos, and also the uh, same border that we've been seeing with all the other 25th anniversary sets and the logo for it, of course, and highlighting the exclusive minifig of Cal Kestis, of course. And then the picture of the Star Destroyer in action with a couple others and the Death Star in the background and all the minifigs included. And and recommended ages is 10 and up. Set number 75394 has 1,554 pieces. And flip to the back side of it. It the uh, Star Destroyer in a resting position, and also a couple of special shots of it, and the features of the set, and also the two logos again, and the and now onto the manual, which on rendering like we like we've been seeing for the last couple of years, of course. And then. Advertisement for the transition from plastic bags to paper bags, and add for the builder app, and then how to win on the online survey. All the pieces that come with the set, of course. Which is three pages, and then the last building steps. Still wish there could be advertisements for the other 25th anniversary sets, but yeah. Now, first off, for the 25th anniversary fig, we have Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order. So, kind of keeping up with tradition like uh, we had with uh, Darth Malak in the uh, recent uh, R2-D2 set. <laughs> so, like, as for the fig himself, for which, like, his face printing, quite good for how it is. And torso printing looks great and accurate enough to the in-game uh, outfit of which, and then torso pr leg printing, also quite good for how it is. And do wish there could have been some side arm printing since he has shortish sleeves. Then, and then also, quite nice use of the uh, recent Superman uh, hairpiece button, this ginger coloring, nice to see there. And of course, wielding the blue lightsaber, but although in the game there is the modification feature where you can give him an uh, orange lightsaber. Or, and probably green as well, but although orange could have worked out as well, but yeah. And then on the back side of it, as for the back torso printing, also looks quite really good for how it is. But yeah. And then have his double side face, also quite fitting to him. And if he were to come in a set that is of the Mantis from the games, well, I would expect it to be like this, but yeah. And then also have the traditional stand that all the minifigs of the 25th anniversary uh, sets all do. Saying 25 years of like a Star Wars printed on it, and also a 2x4 plate to attach it to the other ones. And also to the 20th anniversary uh, figs, of course. But yeah. And that is it with Cal Kestis here. And now on to all the main figs of this set here. First up is. Uh, Commander Pradji. Oh, which the torso printing quite similar to most Imperial leaders, and also Moff Gideon, of course. But although his, and of course not at all any leg printing, but the face printing quite common for how it is, and also the uh, classic, uh, I think, uh, Imperial leader uh, hat piece, which which you see on the next fig as well, but uh, which. Kind of used uh, quite well for that, and and also in the torso printing, still quite good for how it is, but yeah. And next of which is an Imperial crew member, which is kind of similar to the one that came in the UCS Star Destroyer in 2019, but with uh, which with both torso like printing, but not as much detailing as that one, and kind of calm link face printing like we saw in some previous sets for that and same hat piece as Pradji as Pradji but yeah 
and then next to which we have an Imperial Navy Trooper with the same exact helmet piece like we've seen in most Imperial sets and also quite good torso printing and not all like printing but face printing which does include the chin strap as well yeah. and of course quite nice to include there and then next to which we have an Imperial Gunner, otherwise Death Star Trooper, or just Imperial Gunner, of course, well. And the helmet piece, of which quite kind of the same as it has been for the last many years, for how it is. And then also does have some, some nice torso print, leg printing, all of which quite good for how it is, but yeah. And next to it is Imperial Stormtrooper, of which kind of the same that came in most in quite a few sets this year and also a few others uh, the last few years of course but the same dual molded head helmet piece and so on but still good for army building and then last to which is Darth Vader or, or which with the side arm printings and everything and also with the thicker cape material of course but however and helmet piece same as it's been for a decade of course but so, but otherwise, not much exclusive, but yeah. And also, to show that some of which do have some uh, face printings underneath the helmets. Well, especially Stormtrooper. And Darth Vader's face printing. Same as it's been for quite a bit, for quite a while. Yeah. Oh, whoops. And of course, as you see, it does have some kind of unique looks for both the trooper figs as well. Nice to see some extra diversity like we had with the Tanif Hallway set earlier in the year. But yeah. And then as for the back torso printings on each of them, all of which do have some good back torso printing, obviously. But yeah. As far as the selection goes, I think maybe it would have been nice if Grand Moff Tarkin was also included in here. Well, which could have been a little better fit than the Imperial crew member, but but of course, always good to have more Imperial gunners and stormtroopers, which are good, for, which are always great for army building. But as is of which, it could still kind of forgive this select mini fake selection as is. But yeah. To the Star Destroyer itself, which, at first glance, looks quite similar to the uh, the previous 2014 version, uh, this, but actually, the but actually is eerily different than that, which I'll show later. But, yeah. but as for the outer shaping of which, quite good as is. But, yeah. Like for this upper bridge kind of part of which, quite different than the previous one of it, and has that little uh, window kind of area, but a lot different to do than if it were minifig scale and also the crystal ball pieces, but has the top dome parts for that. And then also, as from on the back side of it, which is done with a lot of venting pieces there, and of course, can like flip it open and like the last version access hides away a couple of spring oil launcher missiles but just hanging kind of loosely in there instead of into a couple of pinholes and as for this upper section which kind of a lot of different rebuilding to it and also like the previous version does have a little cheese slope sticking outwards, but it's for pulling these parts back and forth. So, a which quite fun feature. And if notice, the technique of beam sticking out here is actually where you tap on it and launch off the spring load launcher to it. Well, obviously, unlike the last version where it was just sticking out for that, so at least it's kind of hidden in and barely any nose folds for that. So nice to see there. Yeah. Then as for this center part, which I like notice a large gap in it, but 
or a little bit of a gap in it, but actually it's not too big of a gap without it being a little too complicated design for that. And if notice the minifig stands here where you can like open them up and then pull out this beam and then it is the convenient carrying handle. Which is obviously quite nice to carry around and swoosh around. And like the last version, and unlike that version, it's actually kind of hidden inwards, which is which quite nice to see there. And then right downwards is just have a whole lot of wedge plates. And it's that curving inwards and a couple of bits down there. But yeah. And now to accessing it, the interior part of it, which almost similar to the uh, 2014 version, and of course a little different than the uh, 2006 version of it. <laughs> Where you like pull this off and not attach to anything, just sitting right on there. And then take the flat switch and then have them fold right out, of course. Now onto this interior spot, which, which as see the pins, uh, which kind of do blend in with the paneling for that, since they don't stick out like the last other version did. Like for this little area. This kind of part right here, this, which is just jagged slopes kind of curving inwards and outwards in both spots, and then also this little chair kind of area to like sit down and view the screens, of course. And, and the plate above of which does serve as a little walkway for that. And obviously, like so. For that and then above of which is a few uh, tile pieces but with different prints on them to be like different control panels of course for various buttons and such and then further downwards you know, this big large extra section here which has this little technique kind of gear piece that holds a couple of minifig stands and a couple of bits on it, like one of which a two by two, one by two plate, and also this little uh, gem piece from Elves, but it's actually in the sparkly blue color, probably to represent a, a hologram of another Star Destroyer or whatever. And then also one side, which is a random syringe kind of piece there, and then also this little uh, box kind of part that flip open and then have a little uh, uh, clear oh whoops yeah clear blue cylinder piece it's with a flat stud on it not sure what it's supposed to be like could be a cylinder of blue milk or whatever and then on to this back section as he does have a, a jagged slope and or a couple of jagged slopes that have the sticker prints on them, and also these two uh, panel or trans blue panel pieces that have clear stickers on them, like this one of which that has a couple of tie fires and showing how many have been shot and hurt or shot and damaged, and one of which that has spectacles of just the Star Destroyer, of course. other section with a little working table that has a little tile piece that is printed of course and a clear uh, mug piece which they like to throw in a lot of sets and a little swiveling chair of course and then as for the other behind it is a little weapons rack of course and a lot of it kind of held on by the Technic beams that hold as the handle part of course and then Onto folding it up. Again, is over 
holding it up again. And I take the panels and I fold it two ways, two spot. Go inwards like that, and then take that the upper spot which and just slide it right on like so. And I forgot to mention earlier is on the back uh, thrust parts, which are the th the three large three of the technic uh, gearing kind of pieces on wheel parts, and then small wheel parts acting as like extra greebles or whatever. And also, unlike the other versions, uh, two by four uh, tiles used as like back flaps or around it or something. Like that. So now, on to the little comparison. Or just comparison. And if compared to the uh, 2014 Star Destroyer here, which her, her first sight of which is that, this one of which a little longer, and then this one quite shorter for that. Since, of course, this was 2014, this is 2024, so obviously kind of a large gap in a 10-year gap. Quite a lot for a 10-year gap for that. And of course starting to downsize sets of which which of which LEGO like, has been doing since 2021 of course. With like the top bridge parts kind of similar but the top uh, part is kind of different for that. Where this is which sort of just a plate and this is which sort of a gearing part of which well uh, not sure which one is still workable. But like for the carrying handle this one sticks up to doing so and this one which have a bit you need to access for that, uh, for that. and also the uh, turns on both of them although I think the 2014 ones are a bit better than that like or like these bits which act as actual cannons when these are which uh, barely much do so when yet are almost like the 2019 UCS one and then as for grieveling I think 2024 does have quite a bit more going to it, unlike uh, 2014, barely does. Well, obviously, this was a little shorter, mainly to like give a little extra greebles to that, of which kind of good move for that. But yeah. And then, although you could also kind of decide if the uh, 20, but of course, obviously the uh, 2006 version, almost similar to this version, but not have the carrying handle obviously but yeah and of course it's carrying handle similar to the 2017 uh what's it called or 2017 first order one from the sequel trilogy kind of was but yeah So now on to the final verdict. Overall, I think this is which a quite good set for how it, or quite cool set for how it is. Well, maybe a little smaller than the last version of it, but at least still can I can still kind of forgive that. And then for the minifig selection, like for the main pick of the 25th anniversary fig being Cal Kestis, which nice to see some more. A Jedi Fallen Order slash Survivor sets included. Even though, like we had with BD1 like two years ago, 2022, for that, but hopefully we get, can get some more in the future. But yeah, then the rest of which, oh, it's quite good minifig selections, although instead of, uh, instead of a uh, Moff Pragu, or rather a uh, Commander Pragu, which could have been in another set, but Although I think, or maybe Grandma Tarkin could eventually come in another set, but that's just me. And then still nice to have both in, have more gunners, Imperial gunners, and stormtroopers for that. And of course, can't go wrong with having a Darth Vader mini thing, of course. Well, even though he may have come in some other sets previously, but at least still workable, but yeah. And then as for all the features of this set, which the playability, which quite good for how it is, like a little bit of firepower and full and good access and a good interior space to it. But yeah, 
which almost like the previous Star Destroyers and Venator and the Light Cruiser, of course. And also, in terms of shelf space, in which I say quite good amount of space it it is, but yeah. And then also, um, uh, not and as for the uh, price point, in which I say quite good for how it is. This might be a little worth a little bit more than the last version of it. I can it's still kind of forgivable, but yeah. And then, as for everything else, of it, uh, not much else to say, but yeah. But also nice to, to have a bit of greebling going onto it, unlike the last couple versions of it. But, well, since of course greebling has gotten a has kind of come around a lot more in current times, but yeah. And so now, if you are looking to get this set for the 25th for your 25th anniversary set collection, then definitely pick it up. And if you are looking to get Calcestis for your Jedi Fallen Order collection, like BD1 of which, then definitely pick it up. And if you are looking to get this for your Imperial Army of which, definitely pick it up. But yeah. And that is about it with this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.